You can start whenever you're ready. Okay. Hi, everybody. I hope you've had a great week. Now we're starting a brand new week, and God's mercies are new every morning. Can anybody remember the name of the old man that we talked about two weeks ago? Yes, well done. So this is what he might have looked like because he was a priest and in those days they all wore long robes like that. So that's Zachariah. Can you remember his wife's name? Well done for those of you who remembered. Elizabeth. So they are a couple. Now they had a real challenge, that couple, because they had prayed and prayed and God had not answered their prayer the way they wanted. God always answers prayer, but not the way they wanted, until they were very, very old. And then, as you know, their prayer was to have a baby, and there it happened, a miracle. Can you remember the name of that miracle baby? Begins with J? No, not Jesus. John. Well done, well done. And then, last week, we had another couple, a young man, and his name... Do you remember him? Joseph and his lovely wife, Mary. And of course, they too were visited by an angel and they were told that their baby would be called Jesus. So these pair, didn't, um, they didn't choose the name of their, their sons. They knew they were going to have a son and they were told what to call the son. Right, so here we go. So you knew the names of those four. So now, these old people now, it's about nine months or so moved on in the story from when Mary visited the, um, her cousin and so on. And at that stage, as you remember, Zachariah couldn't talk. But now Zachariah can talk because once his son was born and they were choosing a name, he was asking for um, a slate, you remember, so that he could write what the name would be, and he wrote John, because the people wanted to call him Zachariah after his father. And, and suddenly, Zachariah could speak, and he could say his name is John, because God had said, when the baby is born, you'll be able to talk because he hadn't believed God. So now, of course, there is great excitement there. And this special baby, the whole countryside was talking about him because his mother was so old and his father was so old. And yet here now, he had a baby. Imagine that. Such excitement. And then, today, we're going to hear about Zachariah singing not just talking, couldn't talk, but suddenly he had a voice and, a, you know, if you haven't practiced singing for a while, it's hard to sing. You know, like early in the morning if you're in a choir, you kind of do a little practice, don't you, before you actually start singing your choir piece. Well, he hadn't had a chance to practice for a long time, whole nine months, and now here he is and he bursts into song. And it's in the same chapter as we've been looking at, very long chapter. Look, chapter one. And it's called Zachariah's Song. So here are a few things that he talks about. I wonder what you think he'd talk about. What do you think? Did you say praise God? You'd be right, very right indeed. And so he is now starting, he says, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he was prophesying, which means telling things that God was going to do in the future. And he went, up to, he went on to say that there would be salvation from our enemies. In other words, the country where he lived would be saved by God from the enemies who were always attacking them. And it says that God would remember the covenant that he had made with his people. God, of course, never forgets anything. But he would, he would keep his promises, as he always does. And the oaths that he had sworn to their father Abraham, that means their ancestor, long time ago. And so here was Zechariah in song, and everybody was listening. And then he changed from talking about the great things of God 
to the great things of his son. How did he know this? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gave him wisdom to know what this special baby boy was going to do and be when he grew up. Now they knew he was special, different, and they didn't know the future. So he said, talking actually to his son, And you, my child, you will be called a prophet of the Most High. That means God. You will go before the Lord to prepare the way for him. Now that meant the Messiah. Now the people were expecting the Messiah, but he hadn't come yet. But here is now this young man, John, who later became John the Baptist. But at this stage he's called John and he's going out preaching and he's going to teach the people all about the Messiah. Why? Because that's God's plan. You see, God's timing of everything is perfect. And although it seems strange to Elizabeth and Zechariah to wait so long, when the time was perfectly right for this person to come to prepare for the Messiah, then they had their baby. And then a few months after that, Mary had her baby. And her baby, of course, was also very special, more special than John, because he was the Messiah, the chosen one of God that all the people had been waiting for centuries, for centuries. There's a name you know very well, Isaiah, Isaiah. A way back hundreds of years before this, before we're talking about the New Testament, he had said, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And that was Isaiah, a prophet, being told by God that the Messiah was going to come as a child and that he would grow up. And now the Messiah is going to be born to Mary. This very, very special child would be the Messiah. And then John was going to prepare the way for the Messiah. So he's a little bit older and he comes onto the scene preaching about the Messiah and telling people how wicked they are. He called some of them scorpions, wicked people. And he said, you need to repent and get ready because the Messiah is coming and you need to change your ways. And, and people listened to him. Even the soldiers came and they said, about us? What should we do to be ready? He said, you need to be content with your money that you get, your pay. Content with your pay? Even today, people who work for the government aren't content with their pay. It was no different in those days. Even today, teachers have been on strike. And nurses have been on strike. In fact, nurses this week apologized for having gone on strike. And, and, and they were looking for more money. And I don't know whether they got it or not, but they've apologized for going on strike because we need our nurses and we need our teachers and we need all the people who are in the jobs working for the government. So back to this day, you see now, here are the soldiers being told to be content with their pay. Imagine. But you see, John was wise and he was passing on how they could change inside in their thinking and in the way they treated people because they were rough and cruel, the soldiers were. No respect for people. And, and so now they needed to change if they were going to be ready for the Messiah. And so that was John's job, teaching people to be ready for the Messiah. Well, let's move on to Luke chapter 2, because then we come to Joseph and his lovely young teenage, I can't say wife, because she's not yet his wife. They're engaged at this stage. And it was the time when um, the Roman world was ordering everybody about. And the Caesar Augustus was the emperor in Rome, far away. And he said, everybody has to go to Kamusha, to wherever their ancestors were born. And get up and go now, 
because you must, you must be counted. You must be counted according to your families, to your tribes. And Mary, when she heard this, she said, Oh, Joseph, but look at me. How can I walk all that way to Bethlehem when I'm carrying my special baby? Joseph said, God will help us to do this. Let's trust him. So off they set, with, set off with hundreds of people. The roads were crowded. And when they got to the town of Bethlehem, where um, that's where the ancestors of Joseph had come from. So he had to go there to sign up, sign their names and get counted. Long way. But you see, it was to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies because it was prophesied people like Isaiah had said the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem hundreds of years before. And this is what happened. So Mary and Joseph arrive with hundreds of people and all the beds are filled. There is no room. Everywhere is full up. And he would knock on the door and he'd say, but I need someone. Look at my wife. And they'd say, Hapana. No room. Imagine that. No room. No room. No room. Now Mary is exhausted after the journey. And her baby is very heavy to carry on this journey. So they found a stable. Now you know that a stable is not where you would take a lovely little baby. Because a stable is where the animals are. And you know they drop all their, their drop and it's smelly. And you don't want to be there, never mind with a new baby. But I'm sure that Joseph cleaned it up as best he could and found some clean straw and laid it out nicely for his dear young wife Mary to lie down. And there it says she gave birth. Look, chapter 2. So it says she wrapped him in strips of cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now a manger isn't like a crib or a bed. The manger is the place where the animals come to get their food. So, I mean, they're still going to come, aren't they? And they're, they're going to want the cows are going moo and wanting to get a big mouthful. Whoops, that doesn't look like straw. So that was a surprise, but not one of them upset the baby Jesus. Wasn't that lovely? They had respect for him. They knew he was special. I don't know how, but they did. They were quiet and they didn't disturb the baby. She put him in the manger. But there were lots of other noisy things happening. And we'll hear about those later in the story in the following weeks. But for now, imagine. Remember who he is. He's God's son. That's what Mary was told. So he's very special. And he's going to be a king because his kingdom will never end. A king? God's son? Ah, not even a bed or a room, even on the floor? Nothing but a stable with the animals? You couldn't get much worse. But you see, our Saviour came to the poorest possible place to be born so that he would understand how it is for the poor people because he loves all people especially the poor he has a heart for them so there it is so you know the song away in a manger why don't you join me in singing it Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. 
the little Lord Jesus asleep on the and it says in other verses, so I'm not going to sing them, that it was so quiet, the cattle, they didn't disturb him, and the baby never cried, even though the straw must have been a bit prickly. But Mary had wrapped him in cloths to look after his, his new gentle skin that could have been pricked by prickly straw. So all is well. That's God's great love for us. God loved us so much that he gave, this is his gift, that he gave his only son, Jesus, for us so that we wouldn't perish, we wouldn't get punished for our sins because he would do that for us. He would take that. You see, God had a plan right from the beginning, from when Adam and Eve sinned. God had a plan and now slowly it's coming together. First he had to have Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were part of the plan, to have their child who would prepare the way and preach about the Messiah who was coming. And then he had to have Mary, someone that he loved and that he knew loved him and would care for this special baby and would look after, bring it up, teach it to love people, though I think he loved anyway. But she brought him up the very, very best and as carefully as she could. And so we need to learn how important it is to know that Jesus knows what it's like to be a boy, knows what it's like to have brothers and sisters. Because sometimes they can be a bit of a pain, can't they? But I'm sure Jesus loved them anyway, even though they never believed who he said he was until, I think, for a long time. Sometimes brothers and sisters can be mean to each other, and they may well have laughed at their brother, their older brother. But you don't need to follow his brothers. If you love Jesus, you live like he did, and love your brothers and your sisters and obey your parents because that's what it says Jesus grew up and obeyed Mary and Joseph that's what it's like all the time for Jesus when he was growing up today's memory verse is about him Isaiah 9 verse 6 say that Isaiah 9 verse 6 for to us a child is born. To us, a son is given. Now that's verse 6. Now those of you who are good readers and great memories, especially grades 4 to 7, I want you to use your memories and learn verse 7 as well. Though I'm only asking everyone else to do verse 6. Very short. Verse 7 is easy and it says that it's going to happen because the zeal of the Lord, isn't it? The zeal means the passion and the power of God is making this possible for all of this to happen. But you make sure everyone that you learn verse 6. So let's sing it to make it easier. This is just a, uh, any, you can put any tune to it, but here's one. For to us a child is born, but, oh no one to, to us a son is given. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. If you don't like singing, that's okay. Then put a little rhythm to it, whatever you like, so you can just clap. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Or you can even do, you can put little bits in, whatever you like. Make up your own rhythm, make up your own trim. But it's a song that we are rejoicing, because look, it's you and me, us, today. It still is for us today, even though Isaiah spoke long before Jesus was even born. And Jesus was born a long time ago, centuries before 
we were even thought of by our parents. But it's still true to us. So he is still our saviour because it's to us he's born. To us he's given. God gave. This is God's gift to us, given to us. Let's pray. I thank you, Father, for your goodness to each one of us. I thank you for, above all, the special gift, the most special gift that has ever been given, a person, the most special person that has ever lived, your Son, our Savior, Jesus. We thank you for this wonderful plan so that he would grow up and he would take the punishment for us so that we would be able to come and live with you as Jesus promised. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you can come and be there also. We thank you for that great plan. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your love for us. Help us to please you by the way we treat all the people that are made in your image like us. Help us to treat each one with respect, no matter how poor they are or how silly they seem in school or at home. Help us to respect and love, even as Jesus would if we could see him today. Amen. 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 So that's our story for today. Now, you know it, and it means he's for us. And because he said, I am with you always, that means he's there to help you to live like him. Because his spirit can live within us if we've accepted Jesus as our Savior. And then the Holy Spirit will help us to live in ways that are pleasing to our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. See you next week. Bye-bye.